I recently put up a video on 3D printing with this, which is refill 90% recycled PET plastic made from recycled bottles. And I put the question out to you guys on what I should design and 3D print with this plastic next. And a lot of you responded in the comments. Ugh. All right then, well let's get into it. So I have Fusion 360 fired up here and I've been learning a lot over the last few days on how to use it properly, I suppose. And there is a lot of different approaches you can do. There's all these different ways to do things, but um, I'm gonna try to do things the right way according to everyone on the internet. So let's try that. I've got a new blank start here, blank project. And I'm gonna start before I do anything by creating a component because apparently that's the best way to do it if you're going to be working with assemblies later. Now, I'm not going to be doing that with this bottle, but anyway, let's just start, let's start it. So I'm going to go to new component and I'm going to call it bottle, uh, so yeah, PET bottle, that'll do it. Okay, so I have my new component, which is a blank component and I can start modeling now. So I'm going to go to sketch and let's select front here and Probably gonna make it about uh, yay high, maybe 120 millimeters or so. Not massive, or maybe a bit higher than that. Let's go 150. 150. 50. The microphone's in the way of the keyboard. And I don't know about the design. I mean, those, there's those funky Fanta bottles that sort of go wavy. Maybe we'll do something like that. So to do that, I'm gonna use a. Uh, oh, I'm gonna first give it a base. So I'm gonna make that maybe 30. So it'll be a 60 diameter base, 60 millimeters. But yeah, let's go with like a wavy shape. So I'm gonna use what's called a spline. So a spline is a really easy way to make an organic looking curve. Well, a very organic curve. So let's go to sketch and spline, select the base here. And that's gonna go blah, 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 blah. And double click to end the spline. Right, so what that gives us is this really organic curve, which is pretty much impossible to properly define, but we don't, care too much about that we're just making a bottle so I'm gonna give it an interesting shape and the cool thing about this is the way I'm designing it is we can go back after we've progressed further and change this and it'll all update but anyway so let's just leave it like that for now and I hit L for line and I'm going to make the top of my bottle this is just some arbitrary size um, not too worried about it but let's just hit um, D for dimension and let's just see what we've got no why did you select everything Thank you very much. That'll, uh, that'll do. Uh, let's make it 10. So it's gonna be a 20 millimeter diameter opening. Uh, again, it's arbitrary. It's not exactly the same as a real bottle. And I'm gonna stop sketch. All right, so I didn't, didn't constrain or anything there, but that's not a big deal. We're not designing anything precisely right now. And that'll be in a more detailed tutorial later. But anyway, so I've got my sketch and you notice it's closed off and it's a sort of half. Like you imagine a cross section of a bottle, one half of it, that's what we've drawn. And that's because we're going to do what's called a revolve. And a revolve takes that cross section and spins it around an axis. So let's go to create and revolve. And basically it gives us the option to select a profile, which is that, and an axis. So we can select any flat line. So we could select like this top one, for example, but that's not what we want. We want to select this middle one and instantly makes our bottle. So as I said, you know, those curves and stuff, we're not sure what they're going to look like till we actually create the shape. Hit okay, new body is fine. So it's a bit too rotund, I suppose. Let's uh, go in and change that. So right click our sketch in the bottom left and edit sketch. So now we can pretty much rearrange these spline points by just dragging them around to try to make it look a little bit interesting, but maybe not so big. So let's try that. Okay, that's a little bit more realistic for a bottle shape, but now it's a bit boring. I might make it a little bit more defined in the middle. So maybe like that, yeah. Ugh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> While I'm in this sketch mode though, I will add one constraint. So you'll notice everything's blue. And for this, uh, blue demonstrates that it's it's not constrained. You can move it in space. But I'd, I'm not gonna constrain the, the curves because it's just too difficult, but I will constrain this middle line here. And you can see how something's 
constrained by moving it and seeing what how, what ways it can move. So moving this, you can see it's not constrained vertically. So undo. I want to constrain that vertically so it doesn't move accidentally. So I'm going to right click it and then go to horizontal vertical and it knows it's meant to be vertical. It goes black. You can no longer move that. And so that my bottle top here and the base part here, uh, ah, the base part is also not constrained. So how should I constrain this? Leave it in the comments. No, I'm just going to constrain it horizontally. So right, right click it and uh, horizontal. There we go. So let's see how this bottle looks. Oh god, it looks sus. See, bottle design is hard. These like slight changes make the whole shape look completely different. It's really interesting, actually. That'll do. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it there. All right, so we've got a bottle shape, and we could go and print this, but it's still a bit boring. But I'm gonna first add some fillets to sort of round off the top bit here and the bottom bit there. So F for fillet. I'm learning all the hotkeys, so we can hit these two lines here and we can add a fillet, so you can just drag it to, again, this is very arbitrary, we don't care too much, uh, that's 10, maybe 5 millimeters is best for our radius, sweet. And a uh, tip I learnt as well, if you've defined a fillet and you want to add more things to that fillet lineup, you can actually just hold down control and it will let you reselect things. So say we wanted to fill it there, we can add it to the list, but we don't. So that's, uh, let's get rid of that. So this is our bottle. Let's add some interesting shapes. That sort of cuts along the side to add some indentations, I guess. And we're going to do that using a sweep command. So a sweep will take a path and a profile and just pull it along that path. So like we did with the revolve, instead of doing it around an axis, it will follow a path. And we can actually use the existing curves we've got to create that sweep. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to get a sketch, create sketch, and uh, front view again, front plane. And I'm actually going to use the original sketch we did. So I'm going to hide our bottle. So drop down here on the left and hide our body, but then show our original sketch. And I'm going to use this pretty much to copy the curve. So I'm going to get this curve here and then sketch Project include, project. So it's copied that lovely uh, curve. And then if I update the previous one, this will update too, which is handy. But we don't want the uh, the sweep to go into the object like this. So imagine if it's starting here and it's gonna follow the path, it's gonna sort of go into the top. So to stop that, I'm just gonna draw a line. So L for line and just drop a line down. Let's say there. Right, so what I want to do is trim off this line, but there seems to be a bit of a glitch in the current build of uh, Fusion. I'm li looking forward to get this getting fixed, but if I want to trim this, and this is a projected line, uh, it doesn't let you for some reason, so I'm going to sketch and trim, and you can't do anything. No chance it'll trim. So I'm just going to hide the original sketch, now we're done with it. So I've got this curve that was projected, and I want to trim it and the only way I figured out you can do it is by offsetting this line into another line but offsetting it zero millimeters which is just copying it basically so <laughs> let's go to sketch and offset and select that curve and then just hit zero so it's just on top of the other one okay and now if I go to trim it works and it says some constraints were lost but we'll deal with that that's fine uh, and that's um, turn the original to construction. So that lets us do our sweep without going into the original shape. And I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this. Let me know in the comments if there is. I would love to know. But when it, working with splines, things just get really, really messy. So they're great for organic shapes, but just forget about constraining them. It's just a nightmare. Okay, so stop sketch. Let's bring our body back. So we've got our path, now we need our profile. But to create our profile, we need to give it a place to start. And to give it a place to start, we need a plane. But we can't just use our standard front, top, side view planes. We need to create a new plane, and that's actually pretty simple. So go to Construct, and we want to choose a plane along a path. There it is. So select our path, and then you can put the plane anywhere you want. See, it's following our path nicely, but I'm going to put it right at the top there. Right, new plane, let's make a sketch on it. So select the plane and select sketch. And now we can draw any profile we want that we're going to then pull through our shape. 
And I'm going to be really boring and just do a circle. <laughs> so C for circle. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see where the center is, but there it is. Nice. And uh, D for dimension. And I'm going to make it 10 millimeters in diameter. Stop sketch. Right, so you see we've got our profile, our path, and now we can finally fire up. Create and sweep. And it's a single path. Profile here and path here. Right. So we've got our path and it's going through nicely. It automatically selects cut, although we could join as well if you wanted to. We don't though. So we want to cut. Uh, there is one issue though. So I've noticed here down the bottom, it's because that's where the spline ended. It's just leaving this little glitchy bit. Um, and there's a few ways we could fix that, but I think the easiest way I'm going to cancel that is just to tack another line on at the bottom of our path. So I'm going to go back to our path here, find it in the bottom left because we used a component. So it's all nice and easy to feed back in the feature tree, uh, edit sketch line, and then let's just push a line through there. I wonder if we can actually make this, uh, Oh, we can make it tangent. Awesome. So I just right click the two and made it tangent. So now it's following the path flowing off that spline. Stop sketch. And let's try to make our sweep again. Create sweep. And then we've got the profile and then the path. And you can see down the bottom there, it's going straight down through and leaving a nice cut like that. Excellent. Okay. So that was a lot of effort for that amount of work and detail, but that's what you get when you're working with these sort of 3D organic objects. Right, so we just wanna make it a bit prettier and as any industrial designer will tell you, adding fillets will make things prettier. So let's go to modify and fillet or just press F. And we can select our edges. So I'm gonna select, uh, I think I can round this one off a little bit because remember it wasn't a tangential, like we couldn't do a tangential line off that. So maybe three or we'll about five, what can you get away with? So we can get away with five there, that's good. And then we can round off the actual edges of our cut sweep. So let's select those edges there. And how big can we go? No, oh, doesn't like that. Five, five looks pretty good. Uh, maybe three. Let's go with three. Right, so we've got our sweep, we've got our revolve, and we've got our fillets to make it pretty. Now we just need to pattern it. And patterning, we can just go to create and pattern circular pattern and we want to pattern uh, in the drop down features so we're just going to select down the bottom in our feature tree what we want to pattern which is the sweep and the two uh, two fillets we just did so there they all select it nicely and then our axis you just want to select a sort of a circle for it to reference off so that one there is good and you can see it's giving us sort of a ghosted view of what it's going to do that's three equally spaced, but let's ramp it up to five. Five is always a good number. Always looks interesting. And there we go. So we have this weird sort of sports like, I mean, it wouldn't be out of place in the supermarket with some sort of sports drink in it. And that looks good. So probably should have saved at the start of this, but I'm just gonna save it now. <laughs> let's call it sports drink bottle. All right. And to export as an STL, I mean, there's loads of ways to do it. It's, if you haven't seen my video about it, definitely check it out. But probably the easiest is to just go on the left-hand side and hover over the whole thing. Cause there's only one object in, in this and export uh, save as STL. And we're going to call it water bottle. That works. Cool. Right, well, that's our bottle. So let's fire up uh, our slicer. In this case, I'm going with Simplify 3D. And let's see how it would look in vase mode. And here's our bottle. So I intentionally designed this to print properly in vase, vase mode. So it doesn't have any sort of steep angles where the filament might leave gaps. It's designed to be pretty shallow and easy to print. So let's go to our process layer and I've already done this in vase mode. So let's uh, make sure you've got top solid layers unticked so the top is open. Bottom solid layers, I've got four, that's probably a bit thick, Let's go with three. And outside it's vase, so it has to be one. And extruder, I've got a 0.5 millimeter nozzle on the Flexion and it's going to auto at 0.6 millimeter extrusion width. It's gonna be a little bit, little bit stronger than a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. 
Pair to print. Yes, override. So this is our water bottle, and you guys said it as a joke. Ah, Angus, you should 3D print a bottle from this recycled filament. Well, there you go. I made you learn something. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send this print to the Wanhao i3 version 2 with the recycled PET plastic, and let's see what the result is. All right, guys, it's the next day, and what I have here is this. So there you go. You said it was a joke, but I actually did it. This is a 3D printed bottle, 3D printed from recycled bottles. And it actually turned out really nice. The finish is nice and smooth, printed on the Wanhao i3 version 2.1, uh, the Cocoon Create. And basically, the, there's no issues I can see with it. So the next question, I guess, would be, can it hold liquid? Is this actually watertight? So just a disclaimer, I would never recommend 3D printing things for food contact, just because the layers can trap debris and it's hard to clean. But for this, um, we're really just interested to see if it will actually be watertight at all. So let's take it outside and see if it's watertight. All right, so I have the bottle in a container. I've taken it outside and I have some water here. And I also have some blue food dye in a tiny mead bottle. That I'm gonna see, uh, should help us uh, see if it's leaking a little bit easier. So let's start with the water. There we go. Filling up my 3D printed water bottle. Uh-oh. Well, I dripped a little bit, but already, <laughs> as you can see, it is not watertight. So I was suspecting that's where it would leak. Um, there's obviously just areas at the bottom there where it's made the first infill layers that don't hold water. But let's add some blue dye anyway, just for the hell of it. There we go. <laughs> so, that's our 3D printed water bottle, guys. Um, yeah, not watertight, sadly. So, not as practical as its long gone recycled brethren, but still a pretty cool project anyway. So, there you have it a 3D printed bottle made from recycled bottles. So, unfortunately, it doesn't hold water, but I hope you guys learned something in modeling with Fusion 360 in this video. I know it's just a joke, but there you go, you can learn things from silly ideas. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse. If you wanna see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, projects, things like this, hit that subscribe button, helps us out a huge amount. I wanna also stop and say a big thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon for supporting the channel. It helps me keep doing what I love doing in the wonderful world of 3D printing. Look forward to seeing you guys very shortly here on Makers Muse. Happy printing guys, bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.